the Joe Rogan experience. Well, it was a masterpiece. And is it is that your finest moment and your your proudest moment? You feel like as a filmmaker? Well, it's one of the highlights of my life, and and it it's the climax of this book. The, the ten chapters here lead up to that because my story starts in '76. Uh, I'm in New York. I'm broke, depressed. Written twelve screenplays. Nothing's happened. I've come close a few times. Nothing's going on, and uh, my marriage has ended. My first marriage, and it looks. I haven't accomplished in my life the things that matter. So at the age of 30, you kind of wake up. You say, you know, what can I do? My grandmother dies. I talk to her. I go and talk to her on her deathbed. She's, she's dead, but in France, they let them. My mother was French, you say. They, they, lay, they lay them out, and uh, I was talking to her. And in this, I think it's a very moving scene where he communicates with her because she loved him. And his, his own family life was quite disturbing in many ways. It was for him a traumatic divorce between the mother, his mother and father. And he goes into, uh, he goes into this, what, what happened in, it's about a family too. It's about how a family life can break apart. You can become a child of divorce. So uh, his life kind of falls apart and he goes up, you know, and he goes to Vietnam as a teacher. Then he goes, joins a merchant marine. There's all kinds of things that happen. Comes back to school, goes back to Yale University, drops out again, writes a book, writes his first book about his experiences. I did this before, <laughs> back in 1966. I was mm. ni 19 years old. Didn't work out. It was rejected. It was ultimately published about 1997. It's called A Child's Night Dream. So I was a writer from the beginning, I, I think, before I was a director. And uh, when that was rejected, I just said, fuck it, you know, I'm too, I'm too full of myself. I'm too much of a narcissist here. You know, I can't write about myself. So I joined the Army uh, and volunteered for combat and for Vietnam. I didn't want to miss it. You know, I wanted to see it right away. Cause I wanted, for the experience? No, I wanted to get to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I wanted to see what, what this country was about, I, you know. I was I was inquisitive. I was I wanted to know what life was about. I mean, I'd grown up rel relatively sheltered. You know, I went to uh, my father made a living on Wall Street. He was a Republican, Eisenhower supporter. He was a lieutenant colonel in World War II, where he met my mother. So I mean, he was a a, a, a strong Republican, and all his life uh, I grew up in that ethic. But uh, it really. It's something that when I went to Vietnam, he had never been in combat. But when I saw what I saw over there, coming from a sheltered existence relatively, it was shattered. The, look, the glass was shattered. It was just, I wasn't like, I, w I couldn't take my father's word for it anymore on anything. So I had to learn for myself. That's why. I what had, was different from your father's perceptions of what, what well, it was he like? He supported the war like many, many people did for several years until he got older. And then he came around one day and he said, you know, I think it's a, it, I think you're right. I think it was, a, it, it's a futile thing because uh, the, the whole idea of the Cold War, he, he, he began to question it at the age of uh, 70, about 65. He said, you know, what, what, what difference does it make, uh, this domino bullshit? He said, uh, you know, the Russians have a sub off Long Island, you know, they can, they can nuke us from anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to play this uh, uh, zero-sum game of fighting for land, fighting for one country or another, intervening in other countries. He began to question everything. So, uh, and I was too. So it, I didn't change. Uh, I know you're going to go to later in my life, but basically I didn't change until I got, went to this trip in Honduras, which I just told you about, with my friend Richard Boyle for Salvador in 1985. I went down there, and what I saw in Central America confirmed that we were doing it again. We were going into these countries. We didn't know what the fuck they were about. We didn't, and we were fighting, the, in most cases, the interests of most of the people, the majority of the people. They had had a revolution in, in Nicaragua because it was so corrupt. Major revolution in 1979. And uh, the, the, uh, we've been opposed to that new regime ever since. So when you first, when you entered into the army, when you signed up, did you did you have clarity about this? Did you would you just have this idea in your no. head that you needed to find out no, no. what it was like? No, no, I had no clarity. I was 
I wanted to get out of New York. I wanted to get away from my the whole. My parents were divorced. My father. I wanted to get away from my father. I wanted to get away from everything I knew. I knew I didn't like Yale University. I was in the class with George Bush. <laughs> you know, I come from that generation of Donald wow. Trump, George Bush, Bill Clinton. It's yeah. the same generation, but I don't yeah. identify with those people because maybe they. They didn't have that sense of service at all. I did. I had a sense of patriotism. I thought, yeah, but I think, call it, I really think it was misplaced, but I felt that I owe my country something. I can't work just for myself. 